<laughs> so here we are. We've come to the final telling of the Dark Tower series at last. Book 7, The Dark Tower itself. <laughs> are you excited? I sure am. Because it's finally happened. The Tower. Dun, dun, dun! Where should I go? <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of giddy at this point. Do, 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 do. Okay, so book seven picks up right where we left off with Jake and Callahan going to the Dixie Pig. Now, the Dixie Pig is full of, of course, like I've said before, the... <laughs> Servants of the Crimson King, the Lomen, the Tahin, which are human-bodied and animal head. I think I described them in one video or uh, another. And the vampires. Jake and Kyan start shooting and killing vampires and Tahin and, and Lomen alike on the way through. Callahan is surrounded by vampires, but Callahan kills himself, depriving the vampires of taking his life. And according to Keen, he hints that Callahan's soul returns to the highways and hiding that he was so fond of traveling during his years before he ended up in Colibre and Sturgis. Jake makes his way underneath the Dixie Pig and finds a door to Fedic, where Susanna is being held up. Now, at this point, Mordred is born, and in the room with Mordred at Mordred's birth is Richard Sayer, who runs the Sombra Corporation. Mordred eats Mia alive. It's his first meal. He shapeshifts into a spider form. And as we go through the seventh book, uh, Mordred will be stalking Roland, who he thinks is his white father and he thinks of the crimson king as his red father and uh he matures rapidly and will be shape-shifting in this spider creature and eating the crimson king's men he finds along the way so susanna manages to get a gun she kills sayer kills sayer's henchmen and only wings mordred mordred skulls free away and jake and susanna are reunited through the fedic door while this is going on john Collum, who uh eddie and and Roland, met in 1979, gives them a lift back to New York at the Dixie Pig. They go into the Dixie Pig themselves, find the door through, uh, under the Dixie... That's all, folks. No, it's not. Under the Dixie Pig and are reunited with Susanna, Jake, and the Cotet is, once again, reunited for a while. stuff also as a bonus and what i always thought was unfortunate is roland and walter round a flag walter martin broadcloak the man in black they never have a true final confrontation and to me that was always kind of a disappointment because mordred basically takes control of uh Walter's mind and makes Walter gouge out his own eyes and rip out his own tongue to feed them to him. And then Mordred, why, uh, why Flag is blind and speechless, Mordred morphs into the spider and eats Flag. And the way Roland knows his longtime enemy is dead, they find a chair in Fedic Castle that has a tarot card on it. And Roland also instinctively, through Ka or his Kef or however you want to call it, knows that his longtime nemesis is dead. And see, I me, mean, I, I would have always had flag and, and Roland have a final, you know, hand to hand, you know, type winner takes all combat. But I'm not Stephen King and I didn't, Gan didn't speak through me to write these books as a medium. So we move on. Their next point in the quest is to get to uh, Algo Santo, where the Breakers live. The Breakers are psychics collected by the uh, Crimson King to break and destroy the beams. Once all the beams are broken, those Earths no longer exist on them. And once all the beams are broken, the tower falls and the Toadash Darkness, where all the demons and monsters live, will be released. I I'd probably said that in a video, too. The thing is, with breaking, is it's addictive, according to Keen. It's like a drug. It feels good to break, and that's why the breakers do it. They're addicts. They're junkies. Now, Roland meets up with a very powerful, two very powerful breakers, uh, Ted Brodigan from the book uh, Hearts and Atlantis, The Low Men with Yellow Coat and Yellow Coats, and Dink Earnshaw from the short story Everything's Eventual. He also is reunited with Shimi from the Dark Tower 4. Shimi apparently was a teleport, he could psychically teleport and became a breaker and was captured and became a breaker. So with the help of Ted, Shimi, and Dink Earnshaw, the Kotet 
breaks in El Gusanto. Gunfire fires at uh, gunfire ensues. Uh, Finley Ortega and the warden who run El Gusanto are killed, dead. Well, not right away. Eddie kills Finley Ortega, and as he goes to kill the warden who's mortally wounded, the warden has a gun. He shoots Eddie right here in the head. Eddie Dean takes a couple days to die from his head wound. But Eddie uh, warns Roland and the rest of the quartet before he dies to beware of Dandelo and the White Plains of Empathica. The next business, the breakers are now free. Eventually, the breakers will, Ted and the rest of the breakers will be collected by the Ted Corporation and taken to Taos, New Mexico, a facility in Taos, New Mexico, where they will spend the rest of their days fighting the Crimson King instead of working for him. The beams that they were working on will take a couple of centuries, but will repair themselves and are safe. The next task for Roland's Cotet is to save the life of Stephen Keen in Maine before he gets hit by the van. Jake and Roland go through a door, and Susanna gets on a train to uh, go to Discordia Castle, Fedic to wait for Roland and them to come, Jake to come back. She dreams about a, she starts having dreams about a version of Eddie in another New York somewhere. That Eddie is waiting for her with hot chocolate. Now, Stephen King is going for his walk. We do a lot of intersplicing here. Isn't uh, King and Roland and Jake and the guy driving the van and a woman Roland encountered and agreed to help is driving them to try to catch up with Keen. Jake is using his touch abilities to try to distract the driver. They get there a moment or two before the impact, and Jake pushes Keen out the way, and the van kills John Jake Chambers. And Keen is injured, as he was when he got struck by that minivan in 99. Roland... Uh, uses the hypnosis trick with the bullet to convince Kane to finish the rest of the Dark Tower story. And then Roland takes Jake's body into the forest and plants him underneath a wild rose plant, in which he asks the woman he's with to bury, you know, plant wild roses on Jake's grave too. Oi is uh, Oi's with Susanna, so it kind of spares him that tragedy. Uh, but the woman takes Roland to the Dixie Pig, and he, again, once again, meets up with Susanna, the only content member left, and oi. They, uh, eventually make it to the White Plains of Dandelo, and they meet the creature Dandelo. Dandelo's like it. It is like in the same ballpark of it. He feeds off people's emotions, and he makes Roland, however, laugh until he can't breathe anymore. And Susanna uh, goes to the privy, and Stephen King left her a message, and Susanna kills Dandelo via Stephen King's message. And it's the poem by Robert Browning, the child rolling to the dark tower came. We learned that the word child in the high speech means blessed, holy. So they go down in the basement. They find Patrick Danville from the book Insomnia waiting in the, waiting in the basement. But Patrick doesn't have a tongue. It's hinted that Patrick is very important. If you ever read Insomnia, Patrick draws a picture of Roland, the Crimson Keen, in the dark tower when he's a child. And that's how he becomes kind of connected. He, we find out that uh, he can communicate telepathically with Roland, and he can draw or erase stuff from reality. That's a pretty neat trick. Susanna, of course, like I said, is dreaming. Now she's dreaming about a version of Eddie and Jake waiting for her in New York with uh, hot chocolate and everything. And Susanna decides that she's done with the quest, and she just asks Patrick to draw her door. And he goes through, and Roland is... And before she goes through the door, she tells Roland to go, then there are other worlds than these, and she goes through the door. And on the other side of the door, she has Roland's other gun. She looks at it, but the barrel's clogged. She thinks the thing will never fire, like a costume prop. She throws Roland's gun away and meets that version of Eddie. And that version of Eddie has been having dreams of her. And he has... 
hot chocolate, just like in the dream. And Eddie wants this Susanna to meet, uh, this version of Eddie wants Susanna to meet his brother. But his brother's not Henry, who she thinks is. Her brother in this, his, his brother in this reality is Jake. And we leave Susanna there in this all alternate New York with Jake and Eddie. Roland is beside himself. He actually sits down and weeps at the door after Susanna goes through. Always beside himself, too. So on that night, as they close to Can Candle Ray, which is the uh, Red Fuel Nun, the Red Fuel Roses were Roland. And the tower exists. Mordred makes his final move for his white father's life. He kills Oi, impaling Oi on a tree, and Roland ends Mordred's life with his gun. They make it to Can Candle Ray, him and Patrick where the Crimson King is taking up residence within the tower, but he can't go up any higher than where he's at because he's not meant to be in the tower. So the Crimson King is lobbing bombs at them and inviting Roland to come have palaver and laughing hysterically. He's gone insane. Patrick draws the Crimson King and Roland pulls up one of the uh, flower, one of the roses, but it's tough. It takes off the other two, almost takes off the other two fingers in his right hand where he lost the two of the lobsters. Patrick uses the chews up the flower and uses it for the Crimson King's eyes. And like that, Patrick erases the Crimson King from reality except his two eyes, which are staring down at Roland from one of the balconies of the Dark Tower with menace. Patrick then draws himself a door, says the artist. Patrick Danville goes through that door and he leaves Roland alone. There's a sound of the horn, Eld's horn, which was a relic Roland left uh, Gilead with and then fell at the Battle of Jericho Hill and Cuthbert Allgood's hand, and he left it behind. Roland throws aside his gun, convinced he'll never need it again, but there's a voice of the tower that tells him he may have use of that gun again. Roland names everybody that has helped him along the trip. All his former comrades. He names John Jake Chambers as his only true son, and he enters the tower. Every level of the tower is dedicated to a moment in Roland's life. There's even the stake that they used to tie Susan Delgado to, to burn her alive in Magus. Now, I'm going to warn you. We're about to tell you what's at the top of the tower. And if you don't want to know, as King puts in the book, if you don't want to know, now's the time to stop this video and be surprised if you're going to go out and read the books. But continue. You may not like the answer. At the top of the desert, at the t <laughs> I gave it away. At the top of the tower is the Mohain Desert, where we first meet Roland, and the realization that Roland has been to the tower again, and again, and again on a constant, unending loop. Roland begs and pleads, and tells the tower, "No, not again!" And the tower whispers back to the gunslinger, to the gunslinger. Maybe this time you'll get it right. And drags Roland to shame into the desert, wiping his memory. Only this time things are different for Roland. He has the Horn of Eld. He has that fabled instrument that fell from Cuthbert's hand in the Battle of Jericho Hill that he left behind. And he touches it, and he's, for a moment he's afraid he lost it. He can't believe he would ever part from such a valuable family heirloom. And the book ends the way the book begins. The man in black fled across the desert, and the gunslinger followed. So what do you think? What would you do? There's no escaping Ka. Is there? Would you get it right this time with the horn? I don't know. I don't know. But I do know, Enders, this concludes The Dark Tower. Thanks for listening. And we will, as always, see you next week. And as always, please like, comment, share, subscribe. I'm your host.